getting started, finding your place in game development, roles and fields of the industry. Artist. Game artists are responsible for creating all the visual elements associated with the game. So essentially they're responsible for all the characters, vehicles, buildings, environment, graphic elements of the interface, and so much more. Game artists do a range of tasks which require different responsibilities and focuses. There are five basic sets of art fields that differentiate artists. Drawing, traditionally or digitally, graphic design, modeling, texturing, and animating. Whether it be 2D or 3D, an artist's role is often determined by the tasks, medium, and applications they focus on. Because even within each field, there are usually different components that an artist may specialize in, such as characters, props, vehicles, interiors, exteriors, environments, effects, cinematics, digital sculpting, interfaces, and so on. In many studios, artists may work closely with programmers or vice versa to determine how best to utilize technology and hardware limitations more effectively in the art production pipeline. In large game studios, which require a huge amount of art assets and animation, it's not uncommon for artists to outnumber all the other teams two to one. Here are the basic game art positions. Keep in mind different studios and teams might have different titles, but the basic functions and duties will always remain largely the same despite their name. Art Director, Concept Artist, 3D Modeler, Animator, Texture Artist, UI, UX Artist. Art Director. Perhaps the most coveted position among artists, the art director's main function is communicating and overseeing the artistic vision of the game and conveying it to the artistic team. An art director should be skilled in all aspects of creating digital art and is responsible for ensuring that all the art assets work as a cohesive whole and relate and correspond with one another. One of the reasons the art director is such a coveted position is, the art director is usually not only responsible for overseeing the artistic vision of the game, but setting it as well. In most cases, an art director is responsible for setting the mood, look, and style of the entire game. While not all projects will have an art director, especially among small teams or organizations, art directors are often selected for their high level of skill and experience, not their managerial qualities. That being said, often time, art directors do have managerial responsibilities also, such as hiring, overseeing, scheduling, and sometimes budgeting for their department. To become an art director, you'll need about 5 to 10 years work experience, and to be highly skilled in your artistic area of expertise. You'll also need rudimentary experience or knowledge in all other artistic aspects of game development. Concept Artists Concept artists are usually highly skilled 2D artists that create traditional and digital drawings and sketches of the game's characters, environment, props, and other assets that need to be created within the game. They usually work directly with the art director and give a tangible form to the artistic vision of the game. They are responsible for creating rough 2D drawings of most, if not all, the art assets before they are actually produced for the game. A concept artist is usually skilled in traditional drawing and painting mediums and sometimes in 3D sculpting as well. While becoming a professional concept artist is very competitive, it doesn't have a required amount of experience like many of the positions on this list. Also, there really isn't any complex software to learn or buy, unlike many other artistic roles in the game industry require you to know. In general, you'll need strong artistic skills in traditional fine arts and the ability to express these skills in traditional artistic mediums such as painting, drawing, and or sculpting. Knowing how to use 2D photo editing, digital painting, and digital sculpting programs is also a plus, and a good way to stand out when presenting your portfolio. 3D Modelers 3D modelers construct computer-generated 3D game characters, props, environments, structures, and assets from 2D drawings, concept art, and or photographs. Oftentimes, there are several different types of 3D modelers within a game development pipeline, each responsible for a different category of 3D models. 3D character artist, 3D environment artist, 3D prop artist. 3D character artist. Character artists are responsible for creating characters and or animals that inhabit the game world. Whether they specialize in realistic human characters, stylized cartoon characters, or amorphous creatures from another planet, 
Most studios rely on character artists to help drive the visual quality of the game. 3D Environment Artist Environment artists build 3D buildings, locations, and worlds found within the game, usually starting with geometric shapes that are then reformed, combined, and deformed to create a computer-generated virtual representation of the game's environment. 3D Prop Artist 3D prop artists are expected to work on many aspects of a game, from initial 3D level blockouts for prototyping to highly polished 3D assets for the finished game. Prop artists work on a wide range of different types of models as well, ranging from organic assets such as foliage to hard surface assets such as weapons or anything in between. First and foremost, to become a 3D modeler, you must be proficient in 3D graphic content generation tools and software. The number of years work experience tends to vary among which type of 3D modeler you are looking to become. For instance, character artists usually require a minimum of three years professional experience, while prop artists usually don't require any. Nowadays in many studios, 3D modelers will be required to not only model but UV and texture their work as well. So knowing how to take your work from concept to fully textured and detailed game-ready asset can be a huge benefit in becoming a professional 3D artist. 3D Animators 3D animators are responsible for bringing life to all the characters, animals, creatures, and sometimes objects within the game world through movement. In addition to in-game movement and performances, some animators are also responsible for creating cinematic cutscenes. Two of the main techniques used in developing animation for games are keyframe animation and motion capture. Keyframe animation in keyframe animation, animators create and set the start and end points at which important movements take place. The remaining frames of animation are then calculated by the computer and filled in with what we call in-betweens. In 2D and 3D animation software, the computer uses these in-betweens to calculate the rotation, translation, and scale between the two different poses between keyframes. For example, if our first keyframe is 1 and our second keyframe is 5, the computer will place 2, 3, and 4 as our in-betweens. Motion Capture In motion capture, special cameras capture motion from a real-life person by tracking markers that have been placed on their bodies. The information is then read by the computer and transferred to digital bones, which drives the movement of the characters. Animation derived from motion capture is usually far from perfect in the beginning. And in those circumstances, it's an animator's job to clean and manipulate the motion capture data so it can be used within a game. Much like a 3D modeler, when looking to become a 3D animator, it's important to have technical skills related to the software used within the game industry. So 3D animators need to be proficient in 3D or 2D animation content generation tools and software. Animators also need to understand the basic principles of animation and be able to demonstrate this knowledge in their work. Some studios also require animators to rig each character, the process of creating the digital bone structure that drives the character's movement, while others don't. Additionally, while there are many studios that don't use motion capture animation, motion capture is quickly becoming a staple in the game development industry, so knowing how to clean and manipulate motion capture data is a huge plus for anyone looking to work as a 3D animator. Texture Artists Textures are images that define or manipulate color information, surface detail, and light information within a computer-generated world. Texturing involves creating 2D images that can be applied to 3D models to simulate real-world or stylized materials. These texture images can range anywhere from clothing and skin for characters to natural or construction materials for buildings, vehicles, and props within the game world. In many cases, Texturing involves finding or photographing an existing surface, material, or object, then taking it into an editing software and manipulating it so it can be then applied to a 3D model in a process that's called texture mapping. Simplified, texture mapping is the process of using a flattened 3D model, or UVs as they're called, and defining areas you'd like to correspond with a 2D image or vice versa. Unlike games years ago that used a single texture per object in order to convey color and lighting, the vast majority of games nowadays uses multiple texture maps in a single material, such as normal maps or bump maps, height maps, and specular maps, just to name a few. Knowing how to create and or manipulate different types of texture maps is an important skill that a texture artist must possess. 
the background and training to become a texture artist varies. This is mainly due to the fact that different companies may have starkly different expectations from what they need from their textures. For example, the process of creating realistic textures like those seen in God of War compared to more stylized hand-drawn textures like those of Battle Chasers usually requires a completely different set of skills, software, or techniques. With that in mind, a texture artist should have the technical skills with photo editing software, 3D painting software, and or material authoring software. A texture artist should also know how to create and manipulate a 3D model's UVs. There is no defined years of experience needed to get a job in this area of expertise, but like all the jobs in the artist field, you must have a portfolio that demonstrates your work and knowledge. Furthermore, having the ability to create textures from scratch without the need to manipulate photos together or a base photograph is a large benefit and gives you a much broader range of potential studios that you can work with. UI UX Artist User Interface, or UI, and User Experience, or UX, artists are responsible for determining the layout, content, navigation, and usability features in the game's interface. The goal of the interface is to grant the player effective interactions and control the game, while the game simultaneously feeds back information that aids the player's actions, or at the very least corresponds with them. Generally, the goal of UI and UX artists is to produce a user interface which is aesthetically pleasing, while simultaneously making it easy, efficient, and enjoyable to access game mechanics and features, or game and player information. This generally means that the game and player information, commands, and statistics need to be visible or accessible with minimal input. To become a UI slash UX artist or designer, you'll need strong skills in graphic design, digital design, or visual communication. Like many jobs, the years of required experience may vary, but in many cases there is no set amount of experience required to get a job in this field. However, Strong skills in photo editing and or vector graphics software is all but mandatory in this field. While not required in all cases, having working knowledge and experience with one or more of the most popular commercial game engines is a huge plus. Additionally, demonstrating your ability to successfully develop UI on multiple platforms such as consoles, phones, and tablets can be a strong defining factor for a potential employer. One of the most important traits a game artist must possess is the ability to constantly learn and adapt. The main reason this is so essential for an artist is because technology is constantly changing and becoming better and better at an astonishing rate, and the quality of the assets the artists produce must match these advancements. Years ago, characters and objects in games consist of only a few pixels on screen that barely resemble shapes. Nowadays, however, Games are able to deliver realistic-looking characters and assets that can almost rival Hollywood blockbusters.